it's yet another one of those towns. Anybody looking to move there who would take one peek at the crime statistics would go, wow, the odds of getting murdered in this town are super high. Maybe I want to live somewhere else. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and today I would like to talk about the first three books in the Cozy Corgi Cozy Mystery series by Mildred Abbott which are Cruel Candy, Traitorous Toys and Bickering Birds. I think they're all on Kindle Unlimited, which is why I read all three in one go. But yeah, it might be on Kindle Unlimited, so if you want to read them more or less for free, there you go. I don't want to give anything away for the actual murders in these books, so I won't be talking about them in general, but overall the structure is the same in all three books. So Fred moves back home after her friend pushed her out of their publishing company, but because she got a nice settlement out of it, she can afford to open a brick and mortar bookstore, even though generally this is not all that profitable anymore, especially in such a small town, but because she has settlement money and her mother also owns the building that she's renting for this, plus several others, money is not really a concern for Fred. How fortunate for her. So somebody gets murdered and through a combination of stubbornness, her Corgi Watson doing some of the work and luck, Fred finds the murderers before the police does. This may sound very complainy and almost like shade at this point, but I have a couple of issues with these books, even though I overall enjoyed them and they're a fun quick read. First, some characters come across almost like caricatures. This only improves when they take on a more central role, like a certain shop owner in the third book. Up to that point, she is pretty much a caricature that mixes a woman with a bird until she takes more center stage and you actually get to know her a little better. There are several characters for whom this is true and it's kind of sad. I know they don't get a lot of time on the page to actually develop, but you know, you can still write a side character without poking fun at them nonstop. Second, Winifred herself says that Watson really needs a diet because the poor Corgi is a bit chunky, but then she just keeps feeding him nothing but treats and human food that he shouldn't be having in the first place anyway. Uh, so, not great for this poor fictional Corgi. Third, and most concerning out of those, I think, he couldn't possibly have done this, is not an argument to discount somebody as a suspect. So, when you use this argument for somebody who who's close to you, like a relative or a friend, okay, I get it, you know this person, you assume they couldn't possibly have done this, but she also uses this argument for a shop owner on her street that she's known for maybe five minutes and that she exchanged a couple of sentences with. It's like, how the hell would you know? Fred is a very stubborn woman, so far so good, that in and by itself is not a concerning trait or necessarily something negative. But every time she gets told to stay out of something, even for her own benefit and her own safety, she goes for it anyway, solely because she hates being told what to do. Not because she's so concerned about finding the murderer necessarily, or because she wants to be involved all that badly. No, somebody told her not to do something, so she has to go and do it. Now, this is the kind of behavior that is sometimes acceptable in, say, teenagers, but in a grown person, not so much, no. And it's not like the corgi she takes along is much of a guard dog that can protect you either. I mean, he's a little loaf and overweight. What is he going to do? So when Winifred moves back, all she really wants to do is read in her own bookstore, which also doesn't work. If you're the only person working in this bookstore, you won't have much time to sit there and read. I know this because my aunt has a bookstore and it does not work that way. And her divorce is not that long ago, so she decides that she moves back for herself and she doesn't want to date, she doesn't want anything to do with romantic interests of any kind. So obviously the second she sets foot into town, she encounters two hot guys that are also both super interested in her because this town seems to lack women in their age range, like completely, I don't know. 
and she also reciprocates for both of them. One of them apparently looks like a boxer that she's very much into and the other guy is just super interested and genuinely hot but oh my god he doesn't read mystery novels now that's a red flag. Yeah that's okay fine I mean <laughs> they're really bigger issues for when you pick a partner but he doesn't read mysteries and that displeases Fred greatly. So despite her saying that she's not interested in anything several times she goes on like three dates with guy number one so like, okay say you're not interested in the relationship fine that doesn't mean she can't date for fun but she repeatedly tells she's like oh no i can't well and yet there she is on a date it's like can you make up your mind woman you don't need to be serious about this guy it's fine we're all adults i noticed something that pops up in cozy mysteries repeatedly so despite having the most unhealthy diet on the planet this woman is constantly concerned about her weight like oh my god now i need to eat better if i don't want to get fatter or something it's like can we either have her embrace her diet and just be like yeah okay i'll gain a couple of pounds who cares i am enjoying myself so you know go with that it's fine or stop pretending that fictional characters can eat whatever the hell they want and just stay skinny or keep their weight despite their diet very much suggesting otherwise but i'm really tired of just reading about women being concerned about their weight like every three chapters or something i really don't need to read this anymore okay despite all of those complaints overall those were cozy fun books that i went through quite quickly and that i overall enjoyed so i would say each of them deserves this cat and if you enjoy cozy mystery with a fairly average protagonist i'd say this might be for you. If you are on Kindle Unlimited, go read them yourselves and make up your own mind. Don't trust just my complaints. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back next week with another video. Like and subscribe if you want to help this channel out. And let me know what bothers you most in Cozy Mysteries. Bye guys!